so beautiful. You hide beneath your equinoctial attitude mask, but you can't fool me. I notice those soft, exposed shoulders from the other side of the square. Who are you who wears a tavern brothel mask and forces his drunken attentions on me? I am of higher rock. I am your social factor. And I am Serpenko, the consular representative to this planet from... An upworlder, an animal. A brief but adequate description. And now that the introductions are over, I don't need to sing, and I don't need this damn instrument. Come here. Hmm. Perfume. So soft. Animal! No one will see us. Come back to my house. Animal! Or we can just get acquainted behind that building. Let's go! Who is this foolish tavern bravo that has the audacity to molest this maiden? Yeah, mask maker! I am the daughter of a first-level public magistrate, and this drunkard is an outworlder! Oh, come on. This is a sirene celebration, isn't it? I was your just... Your assault on this maiden is not your crime, outworlder. You have brazenly chosen to ignore the struck level of this maiden's mask. She wears an equinoctial attitude. That is unforgivable. Equinoctial attitude? I didn't know her mask was... You, Bright Skybird, and you, Sir Sand Tiger, hold on this animal, this outworlder. Let me go. I didn't know. I shall behead him with my scimitar on the spot. What? Wait, wait, I... Wait, hold on. You can't do this. I'm consular representative to Cyrene. And now you sing to me without an instrument, as if you were a slave addressing an equal. Enough. No, no. Ah! Sir Wellibus, let's leave quickly. If they discover we're outworlders... No need. We know how to behave, and we mind our own business. Just act naturally, Rover. Just act naturally. Poor devil. Now we'll have to find another consular representative. Considering the mortality rate, they should just ship them down here by the dozen. It's these damn Sirenese customs. It always trips them up. I wonder what fool would actually accept this position. <laughs> Poor devil. Poor fool. We have arrived at the Sirene spaceport. Please stand back from the accessway, sir. Oh, sorry, sorry. You are Edward Thistle, sir, the new consular representative to Cyrene? Yes, I am, Stuart. Uh, a note from Esteban Ralver, the local agent for Spaceways. He will be meeting you outside. He wishes to inform you that you will recognize him by his mask. It will be of dull green scales and blue lacquered wood. I see. He says to look for the black quills protruding at the cheeks. Black quills, uh-huh. And under his chin will be hung a black and white checked pom-pom. <laughs> that doesn't sound too hard to... Oh, I see, I see him right there. Rover? Esteban Rover? It's me, Edward Thistle. How are you? I'm glad to be on Cyrene. Your mask. I... Where is your mask? Well, uh, uh, this? I, I wasn't sure. Put it on, Thistle. I must stand away until you put it on. <laughs> I hope Are I you didn't. must. Uh, I'm sorry, Sarah Rover. If I y yes, yes, I have it on. You can, you can turn around. You can't wear that mask. In fact, how? Where did you get it, Sir Thistle? It's copied from a mask owned by the Polypolis Museum. I I'm sure it's authentic. If that's what you're. Oh asking. yes, it's authentic enough. It's a variant of the type known as the Sea Dragon Conqueror. It's worn on ceremonial occasions by persons of enormous prestige. Princes, heroes, master craftsmen, great musicians. I wasn't aware. It's something you'll learn in due course. Notice my mask. Today I'm wearing a tarn bird. Persons of minimal prestige, such as you, I, or any other outworlder, wear this sort of thing. This crowd is getting rather ugly. Quickly follow me. We're going across the field to my office in that concrete blockhouse. That's odd. I assume that a person on Cyrene wore whatever mask he liked. Certainly wear any mask you like, if you can make it stick. 
This tarn bird, for instance. I wear it to indicate that I presume nothing. I make no claims to wisdom, ferocity, versatility, musicianship, truculence, or any of a dozen other Sirenese virtues. For the sake of argument, what would happen if I walked through the streets of Zandar in this sea dragon conqueror mask? <laughs> if you walked through... First of all, there are no streets in Zandar. It's like Venice on old earth. If you walked along the docks of Zandar in any mask, you'd be killed within the hour. I didn't... That's what happened to Benko, your predecessor. He didn't know how to act. None of us outworlders knows how to act. In Fan, we're tolerated so long as we keep our place. But you couldn't even walk around Fan in that regalia you're sporting now. Somebody wearing a, a, a fire snake or a, a thunder goblin... Masks? Yes, yeah, somebody wearing those types of masks would step up to you. He'd play his Crowdatch. And if you failed to challenge his audacity with a passage on the Skaranyi, a devilish instrument, he'd play his Heimekin, the instrument we use with the slaves. That's the ultimate expression of contempt. Or he might ring his dueling gong and attack you then and there. I had no idea that people here were so quick-tempered. You'll soon find out. And here we are. Ah. Why the security? The concrete? The steel? Protection against the savages. They come down from the mountains at night, steal what's available, kill anyone they find ashore. Excuse me a moment. Here, use this moon moth. It won't get you in trouble. This isn't very attractive. It's all mousy covered fur. Look at this. What is this poof of hair around the mouth? Antenna, lace flaps. Look at the eyes. What are these red folds underneath the eyes? I'll look really gloomy and really silly. Huh. Who'd think a mask like this signified any degree of prestige? It doesn't. Well, I can't wear it then, can I? After all, I'm consular representative. I represent the home planets, a hundred billion people. If the home planets want their representative to wear a sea dragon conqueror mask, they'd better send out a sea dragon conqueror type of man. I see. Well, if I have to... Wait until I turn my head, Seth Thistle. Ah, there you are. That moon moth is much better on you. I suppose I can... Find something just a bit more suitable in one of the shops. I'm told a person simply goes in and takes what he needs, correct? That mask, temporarily at least, is perfectly suitable. And it's rather important not to take anything from the shops until you know the strach value of the article you want. The owner loses prestige if a person of low strach makes free with his best work. Oh, look, Rolver, none of this was explained to me. I knew about the masks, of course, and the, quote, painstaking integrity of the craftsman, but this insistence on prestige, struck, or whatever the damn word no is... No matter. After a year or two, you'll begin to learn your way around. I suppose you speak the language. Of course I do, certainly. And what instruments do you play? Well, I was given to understand that any small instrument was adequate, or that I could simply sing. <laughs> Only slaves sing without accompaniment. You'd better learn the basic six instruments first. They should provide at least a rudimentary means of communication. You're joking. <laughs> Not at all. Now, let's see. You'll also need a houseboat. You'll need a portable computoid to guide you, and then you want some slaves. Well, my, and... my head's spinning. Look, Sir Thistle, at the moment there are only four outworlders in Fan, counting yourself. I'll take you to see Cornelly Wellibus. He's our commercial factor, lived in Fan for 15 years, acquired enough struck to wear a south wind with authority. South wind? It's a mask, blue disc inlaid with cabochons of lapis lazuli, shimmering snakeskin around it. Sounds impressive. More importantly, I think he's got an old houseboat he might let you use. That's right. The houseboat and all those various musical instruments. I'll also throw in a pair of slaves. Uh, uh, Sarah Wellibus, I, 
I can't accept... Sir Velibus is making you a gift, Sir Thistle. Yes, Sir Orville, but, but, but I have to arrange for some sort of payment. My dear fellow, this is Cyrene. Such trifles cost nothing. But, but a, a houseboat, Sir Velibus? Hand me my kiv. Thank you. I'll be frank, Sir Thistle. The boat is old and a trifle shabby. I can't afford to use it. My strach, my status, would suffer. Strach as yet need not concern you. You require merely shelter, comfort, and safety from the nightmen. Nightmen? The cannibals who roam the shore after dark. Oh, yes. Sarah Rolver mentioned them. Horrible things. Yes, horrible. We won't discuss them. Now, as to slaves... Rex and Toby should serve you well. Hand me my Heimerkin, Thistle. That instrument. Rex! Toby! We, we are, are of service, service master. master! Sarah Rover, these are slaves? Yes, and notice they wear loose masks of black cloth. You will now be of loyal service to your new master, Sir Thistle. On pain of return to your native islands. With our very lives, we pledge absolute servitude to our new master. There you are, Sir Thistle. <laughs> I, I, uh, <clears throat> Toby, Rex, go to the houseboat, clean it well, bring aboard food. Um, what are they looking at, Sir Willibus? Uh, allow me, Sir Thistle. Go to the houseboat, clean it well, bring aboard food. Yes, master, we bow and depart. <sighs> these instruments, Sir Willibus, I haven't the slightest idea how to go about learning these things. Sir Rolva, what about Kershaw? Could he be persuaded to give Sir Thistle some basic instruction? Hmm, Kershaw might undertake the job and then Thistle can carry on with a computoid. Excellent. Who, who, who's Kershaw? The third of our little group of expatriates, my dear Sir Thistle. Matthew Kershaw is an anthropologist. You've read Zandar the Splendid, Rituals of Cyrene, The Faceless Folk? Well, I didn't think so. A pity. All excellent works. Kershaw is high in prestige and I believe visits Zandar from time to time. Wears a cave owl, sometimes a star wanderer. Or even a wise arbiter. He's taken to an equatorial serpent. The variant with the gilt tusks. Indeed. Well, I must say he's earned it. Uh, please hand me that Zinchinko there, Thistle. Thank you. A fine fellow, that Kershaw. Matthew Kershaw. A good chap indeed. Now breathe in, now breathe out, now breathe in, and now breathe out. You are calm, you are centered, your lungs are purified by the mountaintop air. Pick up the gamma part and play me a compound rhythm. No, not the ganja, the gamma part. Hmm. This? No, that's the Heimerkin. I thought that was the Heimerkin. That's the Zachenko. And that's the Kiv, and that's the Straypan. Right? That's the Kiv, and that's the Strapon. Sir Rolver and Sir Willibus were right. You're a very patient teacher, Sir Kershaw. I'm sorry, but I'm so confused. <laughs> and you wanted to practice on the double camethyl and the crodach. I guess my lack of preparation... It's all right, Sir Thistle. I mean, I didn't realize what the quarter-tone tuning is about. 24 tonalities multiplied by five modes. You're talking about, what, 120 separate scales? Sir Thistle. All played with implied rhythms, suppressed rhythms, extended intonation. Stop. Take a deep breath. And out. You're calm, you're centered, your lungs are purified by the mountaintop air. <sighs> I have to confess, Sir Thistle, that I find Sirenese music a fascinating study. Yes, and there certainly is plenty of it to be fascinated with. Well, you have nothing but time. I'll give you my extra computoid, the one I used when I got here. It will guide you through Sirenese music and customs. Once you start mastering them, you'll fall into the easy rhythm of Cyrene. So don't forget to stop and enjoy the blue sea at noon, 
or enjoy the night sky with the 29 stars of cluster SI1-715. It is quite haunting. Quite beautiful. And? Yes? Keep practicing. Now breathe in. Now breathe out. Now breathe in. Now breathe out. A ganja is a... A ganja, a ganja, a ganja is a zither-like instrument not much larger than a human hand. Correct answer. Pick up the ganja and play the leftmost Sirenese scale. Leftmost, leftmost. A zachinko is a... A is a miniature bagpipe, the sack squeezed between thumb and palm, the four fingers controlling the stops along four tubes. Incorrect answer. Damn. A zachinko is a small sound box studded with keys, played with the right hand. Pressure on the keys force air through reeds in the keys themselves, producing a concertina-like tone. Right, right. A zachinko is a small sound box studded... With Pick keys, up the with... and run off a dozen quick scales. Wait, hold on, this is too fast. Where's the... Where's the... No. no, no, right hand. Right hand on the keys. One. Two. A Heimerkin Wait, is a... I'm not through with the Zachinko. Incorrect answer. The Heimerkin is a cracking, slapping, clattering device Enough! Of... Computoid, instructional mode, pause. Instructional mode, paused. Trills, arpeggios, slurs, click stops, nasalizations, wolf tones. I can't learn all this. I'm going to fling these stupid instruments into the Titanic. Damn. I have to communicate with the Sirenese, and I still don't know a Zachinko from a Gondra from a damn Gamma part. Communication from slave quarters. Connection mode to slave quarters. Rear deck connection mode to slave quarters. Toby, what is it? Toby, what's your message? Toby? Computoid, what's wrong with this connection? Connection mode to slave quarters tests positive. You must sing your message accompanied by the Heimerkin. Heimerkin? Oh, that's right. Incorrect response. The Heimerkin is a clacking, slapping, I know, of wood device. and stone used exclusively with the slaves. Got it right here. It's, uh, it's, it's, Toby... What do you want? I am honored by your communication, Sir Thistle. It pleases me to report that a messenger awaits you on the dock. Well then, well then, have Rex lower the ladder so I can get to the dock. (laughs) Master! The ladder has been lowered since we moored the houseboat in fan. (laughs) Hmm. Yes, yes, so it has. Computoid into portable mode. Slave quarter disconnect. Portable mode assumed. Instructional sidebar. The basic belt harness contains the six essential instruments. Heimerken, Ganja, Zuchinko, Kiv, Strapan, Gamapard. So? Do not forget to take it with you. You sound like my mother programmed you. Well, wait till I get down that. Uh, I, I can't play the till. The outworlder in the moonwalk map before me possibly expresses the identity of Sir Edward Thistle. A conversation with a slave must be accompanied. I know, by... I know. I am Sir Thistle. I have been honored by a trust. Uh, what is the nature of this trust? I carry a message cartridge, sir, this all. I need to... Uh, let me just move this Heimerkin. Um, put the message cartridge in the computoid. As it pleases, sir, this all. Received message text. Emergency communication. Rush. Confidential. Invoice ID. Edward Thistle. Consular representative of the home planets on Cyrene. Identification affirmative. 
Absolutely urgent the following orders be executed. Aboard Canon Cruciero, destination fan, date of arrival January 10, UT, is notorious assassin Hexel A. Mark. Message paused. Message paused. Consult your conversion calendar, slave. When is January 10, universal time? It is the 40th day in the season of bitter nectar. Sarah Thistle. If it pleases you, January 10th is today. Today? Message continued. Message continued. Meet Brandon Craft with adequate authority. Effect detention and incarceration of this man. What is all this about? I'm just a consular representative. How did These I... instructions must be successfully implemented. Failure is unacceptable. Signed by Castle Cormartin, Chief Executive of the Interworld Policies Board. Slave, what vessel is that approaching over there at the landing field? As it pleases the gentleman in the moon moth mask, Sir Thistle. That is the lighter returning from contact with the Canna Cruciero. Well, well, that's a mile and a half. Should take a half hour for them to disembark and... Addendum to message text. Attention. Axel Engmark is superlatively dangerous. Kill him without hesitation at any show of resistance. End of received message text. This is getting... I need to get to the spaceport to see Esteban Rolver, the director, to get a platoon of slaves. I need air transport. I am sorry to relate, Sir Thistle, that there are no air cars on Cyrene. Perhaps, if it pleases you, Sir Thistle, you may inquire of the Honorable Hostler at the Stone and Iron Building across the Esplanade. See, he stands by those large Cyrenes lizards and... With a pearl and silver mask. Excellent. Casual personal encounter. Instrument of choice I is... know. The kid. Oh, damn. That's the conjure. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I meant to play the kid and... Uh, I'm new here. You understand? And, oh, gee. Sir Hostler, I have immediate need of a swift mount. Allow me to select from your herd. Sir Hostler? It is obvious to me that you are an outwelder. And so, Sam Moonmoth, you doubtless know nothing of the stimic I play. Sam Moonmoth, I fear that my steeds are unsuitable to a person of your distinction. By no means. They all seem adequate. I am in great haste and I will gladly accept any of the group. Sam Moonmoth, the steeds are ill and dirty. I am flattered that you consider them adequate to your use. I cannot accept the merit that you offer me, and, as I am sure you now fail to recognize the tinkle of my pronouns, I also fail to recognize the supposed companion and co-craftsman who accosts me so familiarly playing his ganja. You overestimate your strach, outworlder. I... Uh, let me just unhook my zichinko. And now I must get on with tending my animal, Sam Moonmoth. Oh, and please do not infer any disrespect from my accompaniment on the Heimerkin. One uses it when addressing slaves, you know. I'm sure I'm not underestimating your strach. Good day. But, but I have to get to the spaceport, and... running. I, oh, uh, it's too late. Angmark landed already. Damn. Someone's come. 
Slave! Master Moon Moth, it is my honor to serve you. Slave, is it that you have encountered any persons on this road to Fan? Master Moon Moth, it is since I have walked from the landing field that I have passed two women wearing the red bird and the green bird, a boy child wearing an auk islander, and a man masked as a forest goblin who is close behind me. A goblin? A forest goblin? Yes, that is so. Master Moon Moth, with all fear and respect, I must hurry with messages to deliver to my master in Fan. That is all, slave. You may resume your labors. I am pleased to serve you, Master Moon Moth. Could that be... There he is. There he is. You, forest goblin, halt. Stand where you are. I address you in the language of the home planet. Angmark, you are under arrest. Stand aside, outworlder scum. What? Where are you going? Don't move. I block your way. Wait a... Forest goblin, you travel the road from the spaceport and... Where I travel? What I see are the concerns solely of myself. Move aside, or I'll walk upon your face. Sarah Rover? Sarah Rover? Sarah Rover, your door was open. Are you... Sir Rover, you startled me. I, I didn't see you in the dark. Can you tell me who came down the road from the Cano Cruciero? Why do you ask? You're responsible for all relays of spacegrams, aren't you? You've seen the one I received from Castle Crow Martin. Oh, yes, of course. It was delivered only half an hour ago. I rushed out as fast as I could. Angmark must have come right by here. Yes, I'm sure he did. What? Why didn't you hold him up, delay him in some way? I had neither the authority, the inclination, nor the capability to stop him. Oh, I see. On the way, I passed a man in a rather ghastly mask. Saucer eyes, red waddles... A forest goblin. Angmark probably brought the mask with him. But he played the hand bugle so well, like a native of Cyrene. How could Angmark... He's well acquainted with Cyrene. He spent five years here in Fan. Crow Martin made no mention of it in the space, Graham. It's common knowledge. I suppose you also aren't aware that Angmark was commercial representative before Wellibus took over. He and Wellibus knew each other? <laughs> Naturally. But don't suspect poor Wellibus of anything more than juggling his accounts. <laughs> I assure you, he's no consort of assassins. <laughs> Do you have a, a weapon I might borrow? You came out here to take Angmark yourself? You impress me. I took you for somebody who... Um, Thank you, I guess. Look, I have no choice. When Crow Martin gives orders, he expects results. In any event, I know I can depend on you and your slaves. Oh, to... No, 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 no. Don't count on me for help. I wear the Tarnbird. I make no pretensions of valor. But I can lend you a power pistol. Well, anything is better than nothing, I suppose. Here. I haven't used it recently, so I can't guarantee its charge. Thank you, Sir Rover. What will you do now? Try to find Hangmark in Fan. Or might he head for Zundar? Mm, Angmark might be able to survive in Zundar, but he'd want to brush up on his musicianship. I imagine he'll stay in Fan a few days. But how can I find him? Where should I look? That I can't say. <sighs> Thank you, Sir Rover. I'll take the road to Fan. Sir Thistle, Angmark is a very dangerous man. You might be safer not finding him. Oh! <laughs> My humble apologies for almost walking into you. Sir Forest Goblin, I didn't see you. 
Your mask blended in with the shadows. And now, I must bring this bag of vegetables to my shop and... <laughs> Reclaim your money belt. Would you like to exchange masks? I would. There. I am now, for the moment, a provisionist green word. And you? Well, it really doesn't matter what you are anymore, does it? Oh, and uh, thank you for sharing your vegetables with a visitor to your <laughs> lovely planet. Is this the office of Sir Wellabus? It pleases me to answer your inquiry in the affirmative, Sir Moonlaw. Beyond that black carved door is the place of business of my master, Cornelly Wellbus, commercial factor, importer, and exporter. And that's your master sitting up there on the veranda? I don't recognize him. Yes, Master Moonmoth, it is he that you behold, wearing a modest variation of the Waldemar mask. Ah, I see. I think. <clears throat> um, good morning, Sir Willibus. Good morning. The Crowdatch, Sir Willibus? To your friend and fellow outworlder? Uh, may I ask how long you've been sitting here on your porch? Hmm. The Crabaron, more friendly. I've been here 15 or 20 minutes. Why do you ask? I just wonder if you noticed a forest goblin pass by. He went on down the esplanade, turned into that first mask shop, I believe. Of course. That would be his first move. I'll never find him once he changes masks. Oh? Who is this forest goblin? I don't see any reason not to tell you, Sir Willibus. He's a notorious criminal. Haxo Angmark. Haxo Angmark? You're... You sure he's here? Reasonably sure. Oh, this is bad news. Bad news indeed. He's an unscrupulous scoundrel. I understand you knew him well. As well as anyone. As well as anyone. He held the post I now occupy. I came out as an inspector and found that he was embezzling 4,000 UMIs a month. I'm sure he feels no great gratitude toward me. I hope you catch him. He went into the mask shop, you said? Thank you, Sir Wellibus, for... Sir Wellibus? Thank you for nothing. Accept the compliments of an outworlder on your window display, Sarah Mask Maker. Uh, yes. Imagine you have a hundred miniature masks, some carved from rare woods and minerals, dressed with emerald flakes, spiderweb silk, wasp wings, petrified fish scales, and many things I could not identify. Even your mask, Sarah Mask Maker, it is a universal expert mask. I am told it is fabricated from over 2,000 bits of articulated wood, is it not? Oh. So, um, a stranger is an interesting person to deal with. His habits are unfamiliar. He excites curiosity. Not 20 minutes ago... A stranger entered this fascinating shop to exchange his drab forest goblin for one of the remarkable and adventurous creations assembled on the premises. I... Ah, you play that instrument, whatever it is, very... I mean, um... T 
to an outworlder on a foreign planet. The voice of one from his home is like water to a wilting plant. A person who could unite two such persons might find satisfaction in such an act of mercy. An artist values his moments of concentration. He does not care to spend time exchanging banalities with persons of at best average prestige. Oh, that is an interesting observation. Into the shop comes a person who evidently has picked up for the first time an instrument of unparalleled complication. For the execution of his music is open to criticism. He sings of homesickness and longing for the sight of others like himself. He dissembles his enormous straw behind a moon moth. But he plays the strap hand to a master craftsman and sings in a voice of contemptuous raillery. The refined and creative artist ignores the provocation. He plays a polite instrument, remains noncommittal, and trusts that the stranger will tire of his spot and depart. I, I, I didn't mean to... The noble mask maker completely misunderstands me and my... The stranger now sees fit to ridicule the artist's comprehension. <sighs> to protect myself from the heat, I wander into a small and unpretentious mask shop. The artisan, though still distracted by the novelty of his tools, gives promise of development. He works zealously to perfect his skills so much so that he refuses to converse with strangers no matter what their need. Oh, there's no need to turn off your lathe. Where are you going? I, I didn't mean to. Sir, Sir Mask Maker, I didn't mean to. Behold, a wonder. I wear a mask of gold and iron. With wild flames licking up from the scalp. In one hand I play the scaranyi. In the other I hold a scimitar. <laughs> Even the most accomplished artist can augment his strach by killing sea monsters, nightmen, and persistent idlers. For me, such an occasion is at hand. The artist delays his attack exactly ten seconds because the offender wears a moon moth. Oh. Sir Mask Maker, did a forest goblin enter the shop? Did he depart with a new mask? Five seconds have lapsed. Haxo Agmark walks at liberty and fans. Help me. Two seconds remain. <gasps> Sir Moon Moth, I'm glad to see you. Who are you? Oh, yes. A forest owl. It's you, Sir Kershaw. Good morning. In the shop, choosing a mask or two? And how are the musical studies coming... Have you mastered the C-sharp plus scale on the gamma part? As I recall, you were finding those inverse intervals puzzling. I've worked on them. However, since I'll probably be recalled to Polypolis, it may all be time wasted. What's this? You've heard of Haxo Angmark? He's on the loose. I failed to stop him. Well, yes, I recall Angmark. Not a gracious personality, but an excellent musician with quick fingers and a real talent for new instruments. What are your plans, Sir Thistle? Plans? They're non-existent. I haven't any idea what masks he'll be wearing, and if I don't know what he looks like, how can I find him? Hmm. In the old days, he favored the exogambian cycle, and I believe he used an entire set of nether denizens. Now, of course, his tastes may have changed. Exactly. He might be right in front of me, and I'd never know it. I just asked for information in this mask maker shop. He's no help. No one will tell me anything. I doubt if anybody in Cyrene cares that a murderer is walking their docks. Quite correct, Sir Thistle. Cyrene's standards are different from ours. They have no sense of responsibility. I doubt if they'd throw a rope to a drowning man. It's true that they dislike interference. They emphasize individual responsibility and self-sufficiency. Which is all very interesting, but I'm still in the dark about Angmark. And, um, should you locate Angmark, what will you do then? 
I'll carry out the orders of my superior. Angmark is a dangerous man, Sir Thistle. He's got a number of advantages over Well, you. it's my duty to send him back to Polypolis. Except that he's probably safe, since I haven't the remotest idea how to find him. You know, an outworlder can't hide behind a mask. Not from the Sirenes, at least. There are four of us here at Fan. Rolver, Willibus, you and me. If another outworlder tries to set up housekeeping, the news will get around in short order, believe me. And what if he heads for Zundar? I doubt if he'd dare. On the other hand... What... What are you looking at, Sir Thistle? That forest goblin... Wait! Sir Thistle! Haxo, Angmark, don't make a move or I'll kill you. I have a power pistol. You're under arrest. Sir Thistle! Sir Thistle! Are you sure this is Angmark? I'll find out, Sir Kershaw. Angmark, turn around. Hold up your hands. Why do you molest me, I fear that a case of confused identity exists, Sir Forest Goblin. Sir Moon Moss seeks an outworlder in a Forest Goblin mask. He asserts that I am an outworlder. Let him prove his case, or he has my retaliation to face. I am sure that Sir Moon Moth does not mean... Let him demonstrate his case, or prepare for the flow of blood. Very well, I'll prove my case. When I pull off your mask, we'll see your face. That will demonstrate your identity. Set this up. He sounded his tooling gun. Careful, he's taking out his scimitar and... Sir Forest Goblin, please put away your sword. The Moon Moth is not familiar with customs. Run for it, Thistle, or you'll be killed. Hurry! Run to Willibus' office. Lock yourself in. Stop laughing. Show some respect. Take the boat offshore. Tonight we remain at Fan. I shall be in my quarters. Do not disturb me. Moon moth. Look at this. Gray skin, stupid lace flaps... This is a dignified presence for the consular representative of the home planets? If I still have the position when Crow Martin hears about Angmark getting away. Computoid, connection mode to slave quarters. Rear deck, connection mode to slave quarters. Toby. <laughs> I am honored by your communication, Sir Thistle. Tomorrow morning, you and Rex take the long oars, scull the houseboat out to Outworlder's Cove. Contact me when Sir Rolver, Sir Willibus, and Sir Kershaw have also docked their houseboats. As it pleases, Sir Thistle. What is it? Master, now Sir Rover has also docked his houseboat. Also? Uh, what time is it? Toby, who else has docked their houseboat? Why didn't you call me? Master, if it pleases you, the first houseboat to dock was Sir Willibus. Knowing you were asleep, it was for your comfort that I waited until now to give you the message. Is Sir Willibus still here? As it shall be, Master. Sir Willibus has already departed his houseboat. <sighs> and what of Sir Rover? Master, to enlighten you, Sir Rover wearing his tarnbird has also climbed to the dock. There, he was not pleased to speak to a sand tiger. Not please, Sand Tiger? Toby, do you know who the Sand Tiger was he was speaking to? Master, 
though I did not have the great opportunity to acquaint myself with the identity of the sand tiger, I am pleased to announce that the sand tiger has boarded our houseboat and now wishes to communicate with you. Me? He's aboard? Oh, where's my... Oh! You're already... I, um... And what is your business, Sir Sand Tiger? Dawn over the Bay of Fan is customarily a splendid occasion. The sky is white with yellow and green colors. When Muriel rises, the mists burn and rise like flames. He who sings derives a greater enjoyment from the hour when the floating corpse of an outworlder does not appear to mar the serenity of the view. What? While I made my way to your houseboat, my slaves have linked the corpse to the stern of your vessel. He floats there now, maskless. You will wish to administer whatever rites are prescribed in the outworld. He who sings wishes you a good morning and now departs. What? Excuse me. Oh, my God. Computoid, open report composition mode. Status on Haxo Angmark. Report composition mode open. Requested Haxo Angmark. Capture dead or alive. Stage condition of capture. Dead. Very dead. State details. I... I am looking at the body of a man floating alongside my houseboat. It looks like his age is um, 45 to 50, medium build, nothing unusual. State hair color. Uh, sort of brown. Describe features. His features are uh, bloated. State cause of death. I, I have no idea how he died. Reconfirmed remains are those of Haxo Engmar. Who else could it be, right? Rolver and Wellabus have already disembarked and gone about their business. Oh, although it could be Matthew Kershaw. I haven't seen him. And No, no, scratch that idea. I see his houseboat over there, tying to the dock. And there he is, jumping ashore. He's in his cave owl mask. That's Kershaw, all right. So uh, my three outworlder colleagues have been accounted for. This is obviously the corpse of Angmark. Your assignment is complete. Reformat formal report in preparation for transmission. Reformatting. No, wait, hold it. Return to report composition mode. Mode. Kershaw told me that another outworlder would be quickly detected here on Cyrene. Angmark might possibly still be at large, and he could keep hidden, but... No, forget it. Delete last thought. Resume previous function. Reformatting. Toby! Master, it is to you I offer myself... You and Rex see that a suitable container is brought to the dock and that the corpse is transferred to the container and that the container is conveyed to a suitable place of repose. Should I be needed, I will be at the landing field with Sir Rolver transmitting a message. Now move! Sir Thistle, you startle me. One moment, let me close the door. Ah. What brings you out so early? Have you been in my office long? Your slave let me in about an hour ago. I've been waiting for a response to my message. Oh, well, you know, there's no telling how long these things take. Transspace transmission times vary so much. Sometimes messages snap through in microseconds. Sometimes they wander through unknowable regions for hours. And there are several authenticated examples of messages being received before they've been transmitted. I see. Um... So, what is so important you need to wait here for a response? It concerns the body I found tied to my boat this morning. I'm communicating with my superiors about it. That sounds like an incoming message. You seem to be getting an answer. I'd better attend to it. 
I'll load it into your computoid. Oh, why bother? I've been dealing with your slave. He seems efficient. It's my job. I'm responsible for the accurate transmission and receipt of all spacegrams. I'll come with you, Sail Rover. I've always wanted to watch the operation of the equipment. I'm afraid that's irregular. Give me your computoid, thank you. I'll have your message loaded in a moment. But... I'll turn on the monitors so you can hear it as it downloads. Download mode instituted. Initial outgoing message text. To Castle Cromarton at Polypolis. Out loader found dead. Possibly Angmar. Age 48. Medium physique. Brown hair. Other means of identification lacking. Await acknowledgement and or instructions. Signed, Edward Thistle. Controller representative. Received. Incoming message text. Body not Angmar. Eggmark has black hair. Why did you not meet landing? Serious infraction. Highly dissatisfied. Return to Polypolis next opportunity. Signed, Castle Cromartin. End of incoming message. Not very good news, Sir Thistle. Here is your computoid. What? Oh, yes, thank you. Um, incidentally, Sarah Rover, May I inquire about the color of your hair? Me? I, I'm quite blonde. Why do you ask? Oh, just curious. <laughs> now I understand. My dear fellow, what a suspicious nature you have. See my tarnbird mask parts at the back. Look at my neck back here. Blonde. Are you reassured? I guess so. Uh, by the way, do you have another mask you could lend me? I'm sick of this moon moth. I'm afraid not. But all you have to do is go into a mask maker's shop and make a selection. Right. Right, of course. What was I thinking? Good morning, Sir Moon Moth. Oh, what a remarkable mask, Sir Willibus. I've never seen you in that one before. Those are green glass prisms and all those silver beads. Yes, yes, they are. Uh, what can I do for you, Sir Thistle? I won't take too much of your time, but I have a rather personal question to put to you. What color is your hair? Black. I have curly black hair, as you can see in the back. Does that answer your question? Completely. What color? <laughs> what little remains is black. Uh, why do you care about my hair color? Curiosity. Oh, come on, come on. There's more to it than that, Sir Thistle. Here's the situation, Sir Kershaw. A dead outworlder was found in the harbor this morning. His hair was brown. I'm not entirely sure, but the chances are uh, two out of three that Angmark's hair is black. How do you arrive at that? probability. The information came to me through Rolver. Rolver has blonde hair. If Angmark has assumed Rolver's identity, he would naturally alter the information that I received from Polypolis this morning. Both you and Wellibus have black hair. Huh. What you're saying is you feel that Haxo Angmark has killed either Rolver or Wellibus, or myself, and that he assumed the dead man's identity? <laughs> Am I right so far? You're the one who suggested that Angmar couldn't set up another outworld establishment without giving himself a Let me continue with this. Rover delivered a message to you stating that Angmar was dark and then announced that he was blonde? Yes. Can you verify that? I mean, for the old Rover? I've never seen Rover or Willibus without their masks. Hmm. If Rover is not Angmar, if Angmar does have black hair then both you and Wellibus come under suspicion. Very interesting. Uh, for that matter, you yourself might be Ang Mark. What color is your hair? My hair? Brown, see? Well, you can give me a peek at your hair, but you might be lying to me about the text of the message. You can check with Rolver if you care to. <sighs> Unnecessary. I believe you. What about the voices? You've heard all of us before and after Angmark arrived. Isn't there some indication there? Not really. 
I'm, I'm so alert for any evidence of change that you all sound rather different. And even though there are mouth openings, the masks change your voices a little. <laughs> Before Angmark's arrival, they were Rolver, Wellibus, Kershaw, and Thistle. Now, for all practical purposes, there are still Rolver, Wellibus, Kershaw, and Thistle. Who's to say that the new member isn't an improvement over the old? But it so happens that I have a personal interest in identifying Angmark. My career is at stake. I see. The situation then becomes an issue between yourself and Angmark. You won't help me? Not actively. Uh, I've become pervaded with Sirenese individualism. I think you'll find that Rolver and Willibus will have the same response. <sighs> All of us have been here too long. Anything else? No. But I do have a favor to ask you. I'll oblige if I possibly can. Give me or lend me one of your slaves for a week or two. <laughs> I hardly like to part with my slaves. They know me and my ways and they... As soon as I catch Angmark, you'll have him back. Anthony! Come here, Anthony! Now you sure you wouldn't like to have lunch, Sir Thistle? Spiced fish, shredded bark of the salad tree, and a bowl of native currants. It's so rare I have time between space grand reception to sit and eat. Well, I... Jonathan, quickly set a place for Sir Thistle. He's joining me for lunch. Please sit, sit. Oh, thank you. And uh, how are the investigations proceeding? Well, Sir Rolver, I'd hardly like to claim any progress. I uh, assume that I can count on your help. You have my good wishes and my pistol, Sir Thistle. Yes, but uh, more concretely, I'd like to borrow a slave from you. Temporarily, of course. Whatever for? I if it's all right with you, I'd rather not explain. But you can be sure. It's important. Jonathan, you are to go with Sir Thistle immediately. And before you go, Jonathan... You may cancel Sir Thistle's lunch. I'll be dining alone. That's a reasonable request. Why not? Thank you, Sir Willibus. Uh, yes, Master. Whatever you wish, Master. Is Paul to your satisfaction, Sir Thistle? Or would you prefer a young female? <laughs> uh, he'll do very well, Sir Willibus. I'll just need him for a few days. He'll take care of what I want. Are you sure I can't interest you in a young female? Well, the boy can take care of what you want, but the girl can take care of what you need. <laughs> Unless, of course, it's the other way around. <laughs> Sir Thistle, welcome. So, has my slave Jonathan been helpful to you? Yes, I needed some help, a chart I was compiling. Ah. So, did you come to arrange for passage on the Buenaventura? That's why I'm here today, Sir Rolver. Yes, you'd better reserve passage for one. Hmm, back to the world of maskless faces. Faces. Everywhere, pallid, fish-eyed faces. Mouths like pulp, noses knotted and punctured, flat, flabby faces. I don't think I could stand it after living here all this time. Luckily, you haven't become a real Sirenese. But I won't be going back. I thought you wanted me to reserve passage. I do. For Haxo, Angmark. He'll be returning to Polypolis. In the brig. Well, well, so you've picked him out? Of course. Haven't you? He's either Wellibus or Kershaw, that's as close as I can make it, and so long as he wears his mask and calls himself either Wellibus or Kershaw, it means nothing to me. But it does mean a great deal to me. What time tomorrow does the lighter go up? 11.22 sharp. If Haxo and Mark's leaving, tell him to be on time.
slave. Is the owner of this houseboat still aboard? Answer quietly, as it pleases, Sarah Moon Moth. Master, while I have been sitting here on the dock, the outworlder in the mask of scarlet feathers, black glass, and spiked green hair has found it in his best interest to stand upon the deck. Tiring of this location, he has since re-entered the cabin of his houseboat. Fine. Pistol? Pistol. <clears throat> Angmark, please don't argue or make any... Do you have his weapon, Gabriel? Good. Bind the fool's arms. Hmm. I thought... Oh, the red, black, and green mask was me? <laughs> Take off your mask, Gabriel. See? Just the black cloth of a slave, Thistle. I, on the other hand, wear a mask of black metal with a knife blade nose, with eyelids that are socketed, and with three crests running back over the scalp. <laughs> well, if you were smarter, you would recognize it as a dragon tamer. <laughs> as if you qualify to be called a dragon. <laughs> I trapped you very easily. Yes, I guess you did. Have you finished knotting his wrist, Gabriel? Go. Get to your feet, Thistle. Sit in that chair. All right, relax, Thistle. Your arms are tied securely. <laughs> um, mind if I sit? How did you fix on me? I admit to being curious. Well, come now, Thistle. Can't you recognize that I've won? Don't make affairs unpleasant for yourself. And you know, I can make them unpleasant. I operated on a basic principle. A man can mask his face, but he can't mask his personality. Ah, uh -huh, interesting. Proceed. I borrowed a slave from you and Rolver and Kershaw. I questioned them. What masks had their masters worn during the month before your arrival? I prepared a chart and plotted their responses. Charts? <laughs> oh, fascinating. Reminds me of my school days. Rolver wore the tarn bird about 80% of the time, the remaining 20% divided between the sophist abstraction and the black intricate. Wellibus had a taste for the heroes of the Candation cycle. He wore the Chelican, the Prince Intrepid, the Sea Vein most of the time, I think six days out of eight. The other two days he wore his South Wind or his Gay Companion. Kershaw, who was more conservative, preferred the Cave Owl, the Star Wanderer, and two or three other masks he wore at odd intervals. <laughs> well, this is quite funny. The slaves proved quite an accurate source of information, didn't they? They were. My next step was to keep watching the three of you. Every day I wrote down what masks you wore and compared it with my chart. Rolver wore his Tarnbird six times, his Black Intricate twice. I'm amused to remember all this. Kershaw wore his Cave Owl five times, his Star Wanderer once, his Quincunx once, and his Ideal of Perfection once. Wellibus wore the Emerald Mountain twice, the Triple Phoenix three times, the Prince Intrepid once, and the Shark God twice. Mm, 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 mm. I see my error. <laughs> I selected from Wellibus's masks, but to my own taste. And so, as you point out, I reveal myself. <laughs> but only to you, Thistle. Mm. Kershaw and Rolver already ashore about their business. Well, I doubt if they'd interfere in any case. <laughs> They've both become good sirenese.
stand up, please? I know it's impolite to point this old. Do pardon my knife. No! There we go. My mask! My face is exposed! Now I just remove my mask and put on this moon moth. Gabriel! Daniel! Ignore his face. Carry this man out to the deck, down the gangplank, and onto the dock. See that he's set on his feet. Angmark, no. I'm maskless. Now hold still. Stop wiggling. I need to fix this rope around your neck. Ah, there we are. Very good. Very good. You are now Haxo Angmark. And I am Edward Thistle. Wellibus is dead. Soon, you shall be dead. <laughs> I can handle your job without difficulty. I'll play musical instruments like a nightman and sing like a crow. <laughs> I'll wear this moon moth till it rots, and then I'll get another. Oh, oh yes, and the report will go to Bolipolis. Haxel Angmark is dead. And everything will be serene. You can't do this. You can't. Do this, my mask, my face. His face! Please, please, my mask, my face. Set this man on his feet and return to the houseboat. And now I'll take up the rope of my prisoner. Follow me, please. Come along now. Don't make me yank your rope. Behold, the notorious criminal, Paxo Angmark. Through all the outer worlds, his name is reviled. Now he is captured and led in shame to his death. Behold, Paxo Angmark. His face, his face. Please, please, I beg of you. Everyone behold, the criminal of the outer worlds. So Angmark, approach and observe his execution. Uh, Angmark, uh, Edward Thistle, he's Angmark. Somebody please help me. Please give me my mask. Give me a slave cloth, anything, I beg you. See, in shame he lived, in maskless shame he dies. Moon Moth. We meet once more. Please stand aside, friend goblin. I must execute this criminal. In shame he lived, in shame he dies. I will take that rope, moon moth. No, no, please. Someone throw a cloth over this man's head. Cut his bonds. Friend, seize this moon moth. What? <laughs> That's right, friends. Hold him. A week ago, you reached to divest me of my mask. You have now achieved your perverse aim with another. For shame, Moon Moth. Your strach is but worthless dung. But he is a criminal. He is notorious, infamous. What are his misdeeds? He has murdered, betrayed. He has wrecked ships. He has tortured, blackmailed, robbed, sold children into slavery. He has... Your religious differences are of no importance. We can vouch, however, for your present crimes, Moon Moth. Speak, Sir Hostler. This insolent Moon Moth, nine days ago, sought to preempt my choice's map. And you, with the universal expert... Tell us. I am a master mask maker. I recognize this moon moth outworlder. Only recently he entered my shop and derided my skill. He deserves death. Death to the outworld, monster. Death to the outworld. 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 And as for you, we have pity, but 
also contempt. A true man would never suffer such indignities. <sighs> My friend Forest Goblin, you malign me. Can you not appreciate true courage? Tell me, would you prefer to die in combat or walk maskless along the esplanade? There is only one answer. First, I would die in combat. Maskless, I could not bear such shame. I had such a choice. I could fight with my hands tied and so die in combat. Or I could suffer shame and through this shame conquer my enemy. You admit that you lack sufficient strach to achieve this deed. I have proved myself to possess towering strach. I have proved myself a hero of bravery. I ask who here has courage to do what I have done. Courage? I fear nothing up to and beyond death at the hands of the nightmen. Then answer. Who here has courage to do what I have done? Bravery indeed, if such were your motives. Not a man among us would dare what this maskless man has done. Pray, Lord Hero, as you can see by my universal expert, I am a master mask maker. Step into my nearby shop and exchange this vile rag you're wearing for a mask befitting your quality. Lord Hero? Yes, Bright Skybird. I have only just completed a sumptuous houseboat. Seventeen years of toil have gone into its fabrication. Grant me the good fortune of accepting and using this splendid craft. Aboard waiting to serve you are alert slaves and pleasant maidens. There is ample wine in storage and soft silken carpets on the deck. Thank you, friend Bright Skybird. I accept with pleasure. But first, a mask. Would the Lord Hero consider a sea dragon conqueror beneath his dignity? By no means. I consider it suitable and satisfactory. Come, I shall go now to examine my new mask. <laughs> <laughs>